uh, technology is getting tabled. They brought an extension. No, no. Before we get started, I just want to call your attention that uh, Lauren Anderson's on uh, Zoom with us. So if you could talk into your microphone so he can hear and um, talk a little bit slower than normal uh, and wait for his response, that'd be great. Thanks, Jack. Welcome. Good morning. Good evening, everybody. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Lauren. <laughs> it, it might as well be morning, right? Just walked right into that one. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and call this uh, meeting to order with the uh, May 16, 2024 Cecil Township Planning Commission meeting, and uh, it's uh, 7 p.m. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the April 18th meeting. I move. Okay. I'm sorry. I made that uh, uh, correction. I, I saw it. Um, David highlighted a section, uh, and I made that correction on the public comment section. Correct. Okay. I move to approve the Cecil Township Planning Commission meeting minutes dated April 18th, 2024. <coughs> Before we second the the meeting minutes, there was one item under new business. I think it should be none. I think it says one. That would be the only correction that I see. Uh, the version I have here says none. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then I second the motion. All right, we have a motion to approve from... Ms. Hamilton is second from Mr. Anderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Jack, do you have anything for us from a review of previous decisions? I think you emailed something over um, yeah. um, last the week, The right? done plan um, was approved, and I'm sorry, what was the, the uh, Kosky plan was approved by the board? Okay. All right, we'll be moving on to old business then. Application 2024-0004-275 Technology Park and Edition Site Plan. I'll make a motion to table said application as they have requested an extension. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion to table and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is application 2024-0009, Level Up Pickleball Camps Land Development. And do you have anything on that? Uh, just the fact that I spoke to the... Um, the engineer that's uh, Greg Banner that's going to is working on the project so we anticipate them submitting the plans and this will be here next month to final up the last thing I have from gateway on that is from March 20th is that it's correct so they're still addressing 
the yeah, what happened was the the guy that took on the job uh, it was they they hired an engineer. They had an engineer in house. That person left them, and they've been struggling to find somebody else to pick up the project and address the questions. So they finally have somebody on board, and uh, they're going to submit. So I know they're actively working on it. Are are they still within their window if we table it for next month? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. There's no problem. I think we covered that last month. They were good till June. I th yeah, I think so too. But I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, I got you. Them and two seven five technology. I think we're on the same timeline. I'll make a motion. We table the application. I second the motion. I'll okay, we have a motion to table and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and the final item on old business, application 2024-0010, Han Farms LLC Consolidation Plan. I believe there is uh, representation here tonight. Um. Yeah, so uh, this is a, um, a simple subdivision where they're actually uh, taking a piece of another piece of property and adding it to an existing lot. So... Um, we had a letter dated May 13th, 2024, with uh, four minor comments. Uh, those comments have all been uh, addressed, and um, we have no further comments. So I would just defer to Katrina from Scheffler's office if there's any questions that the Planning Commission has. Hello, my name is Katrina Harmel. I'm with Scheffler & Company. Uh, do you have any questions for me? It is a simple consolidation plan. You had really good communication. Thank you for the emails. Yes. Thank you for letting us know what was going on um, with the county as well. I don't have any questions. Yep, no. Nothing. No questions here. <clears throat> do we have a motion? I move to approve application number 2024-0010 Han Farms LLC Consolidation Plan in accordance with the uh, uh, comments made by Gateway Engineers letter dated May 13th, 2024. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can leave those with Jack. So this will be on the agenda for the supervisors meeting in June. And uh, you probably don't need, I wouldn't say that you need to be here. I think we can handle it. Okay, sure. Okay. There are no items on the agenda for new business. So moving on to ordinances and amendments. The Cecil Township Ordinance 9-2011. I believe that uh, the Pl Planning Commission received uh, our solicitor's email saying, um, you know, giving kind of a timeline. Uh, we have nothing new to give to you or to discuss unless uh, Dan has something. Okay. I think the board's still making their final decisions on what they want to do. We can absolutely take questions when we get there. When we get there. Um, <laughs> is there anything that the members of the commission would like to discuss related to this matter? I would just say I, I would defer to waiting on what the supervisors have decided so that we can provide the most comprehensive feedback based on that and the extenuating special hearings that have happened so far because of it. Yeah, yeah, I think there's been a lot going on there in the in the um, in the special hearings. Um, it would be nice to have a little 
there's a lot of different directions, a lot of rabbit holes we could go down as, as a planning commission. doesn't make sense to start diving down everyone we see if the uh, Board of Supervisors doesn't see fit to, um, doesn't have a plan on which one they want to go down themselves. Agreed. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I would love to have a, an understanding of the expectation that they have for the Planning Commission. Um, what they'd like us to review, uh, in what time frame, um, just so that we can be of best help to uh, the effort here uh, with all the concerns that have been uh, demonstrated at the at these hearings, and to make the best use of of our time as a as a commission. Yeah, and I think we made some good comments the last in the last meeting or two as well. Uh, given uh, good feedback on what we were being shown at that time. So I think if they're looking for direction from us, I think we've given um, the feedback that we can give based off what we've been shown so far. Agreed. Okay. Barbara? Okay. Um, Are we required to table it at all? Well, like, since there's been no discussion. I don't know that we need to table it, but I, but I know that some of the public is here to comment specifically on this. Okay. So I think I'd like to open it up to the floor to the public at this point in time uh, in, in this part of the meeting and hear what they have to say. So. Good evening. My name is Mike Monaco. I'm in. Uh, I live on Rising Road, McDonald. <clears throat> I'm kind of new to the planning concept, so I'm just going to voice some issues that I have. I've, I've attended the hearings, and it's really limited in what you can address in this hearing. And I was curious that the last time I was there, the last meeting, the chairman indicated that it was. Absolutely, there was, I think, five drafts that they had been working on progressively. My question to you guys is, have you ever seen any of them? Because the last one I was going to address, they said, don't even bother because it's all changed. And that was the last meeting. I don't, the April 18th version, which is also posted on Cecil Township's website, is the latest iteration that we've received. However, as Jack mentioned, we did receive some communication from the township solicitor saying that there will be continued revisions and they didn't think that there would be revisions available for us to review prior to tonight's meeting. So we've not received anything new to review, which is essentially why we're saying there's nothing more that we can really discuss if we don't know what else is being put in front of us. Then maybe I don't understand what what you guys, uh, what your responsibilities are. But my understanding was uh, that there's been a number of answers to the questions, or actually to the drafts themselves, from particularly Range, who's most involved. And I was curious if you've seen those, because they said they've sent them, and whether you had any opinion on those contentions that they're making, uh, because I, I did have some uh, some review of those, and they're pretty contentious. And whether the township is being uh, in a position that they're going to have to defend that in a legal action. So my question is, have you seen those or the answers? And if not, are you going to see them? Is that part of your responsibility? That would be something that I would ask the solicitor as far as why we have or have not seen them or the supervisors. If that communication has been sent to the township, whether or not we see it is um, not, we, we aren't mind readers, so we don't know. Maybe my question. What, there, was there something in? Oh, I, in be, the, I believe in we March did meeting? receive previous range comments, yes. From the March meeting, the first? Correct. Yes. Yes. We did. This, is pretty con this is pretty current. So, so I, I, it's probably, do you, know, you just have some comments? He could, Mike could, let us know what's on his mind, right? I, right. Yeah. Um, 
I'm sorry, say that again? Oh, tell us what's on your mind or what, um, any particular comments? The, I've been a, a, a taxpayer and a, and a citizen of CISO for a long time. This is the only time I've experienced uh, how they addressed this hearing. Um, there was no workshop. There's no question and answer period. There's supposed to be questions that were directed to the township and then they were supposed to be answered and that's what drove the drafts that are being draft, drafted. <clears throat> so I, I'm actually in a point that I'm arguing the whole, the whole uh, process that they're going through because I don't think it's been very transparent. We haven't even gotten to the, the, the question of what's in the drafts because they seem to be a moving target. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I guess in, in your experience, when are they gonna give you something to look at? Do you have any input prior to them giving you a final draft? I guess is the question. Well, I'll answer that. Uh, I think they, they have certainly asked us for our feedback. And I think the last, um, the last meeting for sure and, and the meeting before that, that we all gave you know, feedback on a number of the plans that we'd seen, and, and I think um, well, one of the, okay, we, we, we gave feedback. Direct. We gave well uh, on some of the previous drafts, and and I'd like to think that some of the changes that are occurring are as a result of some of the feedback that we've given along the way. I mean, we are an advisory board, so we don't have any authority to make decisions. We have we're in a position to to review and to and to advise, and that's so we've been given pre, um, we were given some preliminary drafts. We reviewed them. And we gave feedback on those. And then they made some revisions, and we saw them what, the day of the last meeting, right? Mm -hmm. I think we got them emailed to us. That, that, uh, Lauren, I'm, I think I recall it was five hours. Uh, right. Five hours, right? Five, yes. five hours. Yeah, yeah. And Gretchen, Gretchen um, <clears throat> Moore, the solicitor, was very kind in articulating right off at the beginning of the meeting, at, at the beginning of the discussion of the ordinance that she didn't expect us to be able to provide thorough comments when we had just received a draft that afternoon. I'm curious if that draft was the newest one that limited 99% of the property against drilling. Is I believe that it's the, it's the um, one that's posted on the Cecil Township website. Okay, okay. So yes. Yes. Yeah. So so we've given feedback, and I think that's where we're at right now as a, as a board before you came up is, I think we're on, you know, we could sit here and talk tonight about our opinions of where we think the it should go, but I don't have anything new to say that I didn't already say. If we're in a holding pattern until we see the next draft. Right. When we get a draft placed in front of us that we're, that this, where it's indicated to us, this is the direction we want to go. Can you look at this and, 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 and let us know what you think as, as an advisory board, okay. then we can review that document at that time and, and give feedback. I appreciate your, your, your position because that's kind of, to tell you the truth, I really am having a hard time struggling with what you, you even want to address in the ordinance because I can't get by the, the way they're doing this. And it's, it's limiting in our input, except for selected individuals. And I'll be more direct. Did you, did you have, did they provide the sound study that was given? It's on the website, yeah, yes. So you guys address that? We have looked at it. Um, I've, I've looked at it. Um, I looked at it. I'm yeah, I've, I've looked at it. Lauren looked at it, yeah. My, my only comment on that was, and this was told by uh, the chairman of the board, that that was given, that, that was uh, contracted to address sound coming from two wells due to a complaint. If you read that in its entirely, there's one sentence that basically says range has complied whatever that means, okay? The, the, the entire first page of the in, introduction addresses what the ordinance should be. The conclusion addresses four or five different ordinances that, are, that they should be applied. Mm -hmm. And my point being, it wasn't really a, a, a sound study. I think it was a hit piece to get in front because there was no opportunity to question them, him, this one guy, um, so I was, uh, I just want to voice that because there is, I think, some serious problems with how they approach that. If they wanted to approach it as a, a professional, then they should have did that and allowed the, the proper, 
cross-examined, but at least challenge uh, how they addressed it. Because nowhere in that report did they find fault with anything that Range was doing. So therefore, it was really a piece that was made to, to, to support an ordinance that they're trying to draft now. Pre and this is in February. This is before this is really under uh, investigation, per se. So my issue, again, is I, I just don't like the whole procedure, let alone what they're trying to do, and whether that's being used to influence anything that you guys might do. So I'm kind of challenging that. I believe there were some workshops a few years ago, though. Um, but it, it was there's it was always quite been some, workshops. Yes, there's always there's always been an answer, a question and answer, and, that, and I addressed that, and it was rudely told by Mr. Casiola that he had 28 years and he'd never seen one, which I've been here my entire life. I know that for a fact. But that, that's irregardless. All I'm trying to say is there's some issues here that I think are that are pre preemptive attacks based on. Uh, where they think they want to be, but to this day, I don't, except for this last one, is every time an, a draft is done, it's more restrictive to the point it's 99%. And not that I'm a genius, but there's some significant issues being addressed if this goes forward against Cecil Township. I mean, this is, they're, they're, you, you should investigate whether this is going to be, is going to escape the local uh, judicial system. I mean, you're, you're looking, they're, they're talking about going federal. These, these are significant costs that I think the township needs to, to evaluate. At that least know. If you want to go in that direction, yeah. but it'd be nice to know. We have, um, Lauren specifically, um, as well, and, and we have all agreed that there are certain things in the ordinance that um, are very uh, clearly in state and federal mandates and statutes and that we need to well and, one, and a couple more things and then i'll let you list uh, the, the the existing ordinance in my understanding has never been really applied every, every permit that was given there's always been a number of uh, conditions uh, applied to each one so it's really the, that ordinance has been modified and agreed to by range and their operating procedures and in compliance. And my question, and I wish she was here, the, the attorney is, let's say that they, you were to go to court for the new ordinance, and let's assume that you lose, whether they can go back and say, well, you know, the existing ordinance has never really been applied the way it was designed and whether they can go back and you're actually taking a step backwards in well, that condition. Yeah, so, I mean, as I recall, th there was a, um, there was another attempt at a, at a previous ordinance that was, that included a number of those things that are, uh, that they get, got exactly. challenged in court and lost there. So then they came back with the conditional approvals right. And so each, so they negotiate out on, on each one of those. And again, I'm not, yeah, but I'm was, not, I'm not an attorney. I'm not, I'm not neither, but I'm acting in that capacity here. I'm just trying to re recall uh, from you know in what reality, I've that was seen at prior meetings from range as an <clears throat> operating procedure that they agreed to, which was not in the ordinance, and they did not have to comply. Sure. So, well, once they agree to comp comply to it, then they're bound to it at that but point. It's, but it's changed from location to location, sure. which again. I think can be challenged because it's not consistent. And that's a problem I see with the, the new ordinance that they published. It, it's actually asking for parameters that need to be evaluated before you can even decide what you want to do. I, that strikes to a number of legal issues uh, going forward. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think the last two meetings, I think us as a planning commission, we, we pointed that out pretty directly that that the, the drafts of the ordinance that we've seen uh, have in many of the areas uh, uh, that they are attempting to add to contradict state and federal regulations. And our recommendation would be that this could expose the township to further legal action from other companies, not just range, that would like to come in and develop or uh, residents that have mineral rights that would like to develop them in specific areas that uh, that are allowable, that could be 
uh, developed. And so I think we've been pretty forthright in the comments that we've submitted to the to the board on the versions of the ordinance that that some of those areas of the new ordinance should be redacted or uh, or limited to what is already currently in state and federal regulations. So you limit the township's exposure uh, to any future litigation. And I think and, and I also I think I also added on to that as well that there's a there's a very distinct uh, difference between contradicting and and going above and beyond. And there's there's plenty of precedent out there for um, you know federal um, law and and standards and regulations to set one bar, and then for states and counties and other local uh, authorities uh, authorities having jurisdiction, so on and so forth, being able to go above and beyond that. Um, well, so, yeah. So so, so so long as it doesn't limit the ability to safely develop the, the resource in appropriate uh, areas. And I think range has gone above and beyond in their in the conditions that they've accepted during those conditional use approvals, because, uh, you know, that's what they determined was the best course of action to proceed with. Uh, with the township in an agreement uh, when those permits were approved. Uh, so, so that obviously is up to them, but you know, that may not work for every operator that comes in, which is why you have an ordinance which sets the baseline and <clears throat> the conditional use approval hearings would establish other conditions that an operator may or may not to uh, agree to during that, that course of the approval. And just to follow up on that, um, I actually made a call to the, to the state concerning Title 58, I believe it is, that covers this, and, and Act 13. And it clearly states, unless there's some other conditions in the township that allow that setback to be larger, uh, and, and I'm not sure that exists in the township. So, again, when I address that, I don't, I don't get a good answer other than we can do it. And, I, again, I think that should be a... a, a challenged uh set, set set setbacks at the local level are a very slippery slope you're absolutely right that at the state level uh they the the state governs setbacks from streams wetlands and other resources they also you could make the argument and again i'm not an attorney i'm an engineer about, you know who, who specializes in permitting but the state can also set setbacks for uh, structures, occupied structures as well, which is what they've done with the 500 foot uh, current setback for oil and gas operations within Act 13 that they determined to be a safe, safe distance away from operations uh, that we're talking about. And just to go one step further, but I guess it's a moot point now when they were addressing the 1,000 foot setback, one of the questions I had, and maybe you guys should consider that, if they're, if they're going to go back to this. This new one is kind of off the wall. But anyways, the 1,000-foot setback, my first question would be, if you were to do that, can you build any residential structures within that, that space? In the current ordinance, I believe there is wording that says that if oil and gas, uh, if there is uh, an approval and that new structures, residential structures or occupied structures come into play, that um, the setbacks would have to be complied with at that point. So at that point, mm -hmm. they've not only limited for- I could, I could be wrong. Is that, that's my understanding of it, but I could be wrong. And, and I think it's also I think it's also that you cannot initiate uh, the oil and gas um, operations unless you're unless you honor those setbacks. But that does not stop somebody from saying after the operations have begun, saying I want to build a house 500 feet from it, the setbacks. Are, they totally can do that. They can. Uh, that's that happens in a lot of our ordinances, a lot of our setbacks that we have where someone can then say, I want to build within that setback area once that operation has begun, that doesn't stop the operation. It can stop future operations, but it won't stop that current 
uh, approved and permitted operation. I mean, that's kind of what I had. I'm, I, unfortunately, I'm not getting very su much success in addressing my questions and answers with the board, and they keep coming up with new drafts. And I'd like to address the draft, <laughs> what they're trying to do to see if it's within reason and, and can be accomplished. But that seems to be a moving point. I really. <coughs> It is. It is a moving target. Trying to address this in the run. It is. It's very difficult. It's a moving target, and that's essentially why we've said because there's nothing new for us to review. There's not. But I find that hard to believe if they're putting it on. They're. How do I say this? They're manipulating the whole process to put in procedure or uh, recommendations that are extremely restrictive. To to in violation. Oh my, bad word contrast to what the current uh, title is recommending. And, and I, I guess you guys, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around what you guys do. I mean, you're gonna approve, you're, you're gonna either approve or not the final, or do you have any input at all on how to get here? Again, we have input, you have but we're a recommending body. So even when somebody comes to us with um, a consolidation plan, we can make the recommendation to not approve for reasons X, Y, and Z. It can then go before the Board of Supervisors and the Board of Supervisors and say, we hear what you say, but, but uh, you know, we think that this should be approved. And they can, they can go against our approval. But I would our think your weight is pretty heavy. We can, approve, we can recommend to approve things. We can recommend uh, to not approve things. And the Board of Supervisors can heed our recommendations or they can make their own decisions and even then we can make recommendations in, in this in this meeting and things can change in just the two to three weeks before the board of supervisors meeting where the where the entire scenario is now different so we can say we recommend this isn't approved and the new information or we say we recommend to approve new information comes to light and the board of supervisors says nope we're not approving that and here's why so we're recommending body uh, they want us to give feedback on, on this ordinance. But you only give feedback at, at the end. You don't give it, we can't address, you don't publish it anywhere. Uh, we give feedback in our meetings. In our meetings. Yes. But there's nothing on If the there's something presented to us, like right now we have nothing to review. How about the prior meetings? Do you have that published anywhere on your feedback? The, the yeah, videos are posted on the, on the uh, Township website. Okay. And uh, you can feel free to go back and and look those over and, and hear the uh, comments. Yeah, and we have the, uh, the meeting minutes, and I think last month's minutes do address the, uh, we were looking for an explanation on the, the sound levels, the, the mm -hmm. DBA versus the, the DBC. So there was discussion about the, uh, this, this uh, well, see, sound okay, study. I'm, I'm gonna beat that up, because that's one of my issues with the supposedly expert. That he wasn't there to give that opinion. So if that's what his opinion was, it should have been able to be at least challenged, and it, it, they won't, it, it's not, a, I can't. They won't give me the avenue to do that. So those, those conditions that he had, and I've talked to some experts in the field, said that that one provision really is not measured appropriately anywhere near us. So they're, they're looking for state of the, it's not even state of the art, it's new, and damn near not, measurable so how do you address that did they tell you that you know that that's that's what i'm trying to get at was it disclosed to you or just disclosed in that, that report? Well, i think that was one I of our here. one of our questions we're, we're waiting for more feedback from from the expert or from the supervisors because we we don't want to make a recommendation on something that we don't understand exactly we needed more information ourselves okay and, and jack the next draft will be there will be a public hearing to discuss the next draft. There is a hearing on Okay. Well, have you been to one of those hearings? Uh, I have not. Okay, you get three minutes to talk. And so there's no question and answer. So at the end of the day, all I'm telling you is you gotta investigate what they're giving you because I think it's biased and, and manipulative. And That's then that hearing, there won't be any um, 
comments by the Planning Commission because we haven't had anything in front of us, so this hearing will go on without any input, any new input from Planning Commission. Okay. Yeah, we won't have another meeting before then, so. Thank you. And I, we'll have the meeting with live. Correct. Is there any other public comment? While we're waiting, can I uh, just put um, everything into perspective? With respect to uh, videotaping, uh, I do videotape all the meetings except the historical society uh, in this room. I post all those meetings on our uh, website I post the agendas for all the meetings on our website. It's right uh, next to the TV um, that you can click to s actually view that month's uh, video. We are obligated to put the Board of Supervisors minutes out there each month. And as you know, um, the current meeting, they vote on the prior uh, months minutes and adopt them and it's then that I put them out there so yeah there's a month delay between the meeting and the minutes we are not obligated to put them out put the minutes out for any of the uh, committee and boards other than the BOS so that's why you're not going to see those out there now proper procedure is right to know it's a very easy form uh, to fill out you go through the procedures and you know if you request uh, you know a set amount of uh, minutes or documents or something like that it goes through our um, right to know officer mr. Don Genuso and um, we have uh, limited time to get it to you so um, right to know forms are very easy to find just type in right to know it's a state form we, we accept them uh, easy to fill out what I would suggest is just um, be specific on what you're asking for okay. thank you Jack uh, as uh, for the commission, I do believe that we should um, make a motion if we're going to table this. Um, it, that's what we've done in previous months, so I think we should continue that. Uh, if we're not going to make a, a motion to approve or uh, to recommend for not approval, then we should make a motion to table. I'll make, I'll make a motion to table um, in hopes that we will have revisions to provide additional feedback i'll second that motion okay so we have a motion to table in a second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. i asked that was a motion to table the discussion yes yes right. until we have something to review okay all right next item on the agenda is discussion any any other items anybody would like to discuss Then, do we, do we have a motion to adjourn? Oh, <clears throat> that'd be a no. <laughs> Come on down, Bruce. Bruce Gasvoda, 59 Coleman Road. Um, so you will have a meeting before they have another one of their hearings? No. You won't. So we're not going to know what you guys. No, they'll have input. the they'll have their hearing on June fifth. Then we will have a our next meeting in third Thursday, third Thursday in June, and then the board of supervisors. From what has been, from what I'm hearing, from what I think many of us are hearing, are planning on take action at the July board of supervisors meeting. So that'll so there'll be opportunity for us to see what's comes out of that June 5th um, hearing or 
Okay. Am I using the right word there? Hearing? Out of that June 5th hearing, give feedback on it before the Board of Supervisors takes action on it in July. Okay. So if anything is presented to you at the hearing, the next hearing, we'll have no, in, we'll have no right. input prior to that to make any okay. comments on it. Well, my other question was when they brought these other drafts to you guys, I mean, I don't know if you can answer it. You might not want to answer because it's a mute point now because, like you say, they keep changing on you. But could you tell me where, if you guys were in favor of the 1,500-foot setbacks? I mean, could you tell me? I mean, I don't watch the Internet, so somebody tell me something. I think there's, I think there's a, a variety of – I mean, there's five people on, the, on this commission. Right, well, so I think there's five, five different opinions on it. And, and honestly, I think it's there, – there was a lot more questions than opinions that whenever we last reviewed it. I mean – we all wanted to know. I, Lauren made some great points about, you know, some of the items in that ordinance were seemed like they had been defined by who wrote, ever wrote the ordinance. Whenever there's existing established um, definitions, industry definitions, uh, definitions that have been established by uh, federal agencies and state agencies, that would be more appropriate for us to use in those situations. I thought that was some. I, I thought it was a great comment by Lauren and it helps define, you know, words matter, right? So being able to define what we mean when we say that's important. So using um, well, who established is, definitions who is, is writing these orders? Big step to that. The solicitor. I, the solicitor. So she's basically running the township. She's she's writing at the ordinance at the direction of the supervisors. Correct. Well you know what I mean, but <laughs> I mean, we all know. I mean, we go to these meetings, but I don't. I don't understand where they come from. But okay. So Thank your you. question about like setbacks, we've only been able to review the so far maps that were provided to right. us. You said like 500. We 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 haven't even seen a map with like 500 foot setbacks or 750 foot setbacks. We've only seen what they've posted so oh, far now whether now. anything else comes out i don't know i guess we'll, we'll just wait and see what the supervisors provide us with okay, to review thing, you know they're talking like you guys says if they would have took i guess your recommendation last time there's going to be one percent of the township able to put wells up i mean doesn't that kind of kind of sound like they're not a good deal it, it, it certainly would, would present a problem to the township for those that have their own mineral rights to be able to develop them and work with operators that can do that, certainly. Yeah, any time that you are 99% restricted on any activity within a township, you expose yourself to litigation, potentially. And that's where, I mean, you guys can't say, but I think we're all, everybody here knows that's where we're going to end up again. Uh, and we're, we're saying 99%. Everybody's using this term 99%. But I, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding isn't that it's actually 99%. It's just a very large majority of the township is unable to be developed with for mineral rights, correct? Well, I'm just using what they told us at that workshop, 1%. Okay. Only 1% is going to be available to put wells. Okay. I, mean, I believe that's the 1,500 foot setback. No, that's the new one. The parameter in the county is 1,500. It's brand new. I don't understand. I don't see it. It's really good. The, from May 6th, the one that said proposed well sites. I apologize. I can't find it. It's okay. I, I think that's what he's referring to, but I'm not positive. Yeah, if you look at that. The, this is the important part uh, to me is there obviously there's a lot of revisions going along there's a lot of ideas floating out there um, you know th this is the important part and I appreciate you coming down Mike I appreciate you coming coming up here and speaking Bruce um, because we need feedback from from the residents you know the, you have a board of supervisors it's it's five people you know, they, they have a solicitor who, who has a job to do to give 
as good of legal advice as they can, but they're they're one attorney and there's you know thousands, tens of thousands of you know, how many attorneys I don't know, right? We're com commission of five people. We're trying to represent the people, but we need we need feedback. So I know some a lot of people will, will um, you know see a propose see a, a lot of different proposed things and they get upset. I, me personally, I'm not upset. I I like seeing all the different plans. Um, we asked for maps to go along with each of those plans so we could actually see how it impacts. And I like hearing back from everybody saying, you know, this is what this is what I think of this plan. This is what I think of this plan. You know, it's it's not a horrible thing to have 15 plans in front of you and say, you know what, I like this out of this plan. I like this out of this plan. I like this out of this plan. Uh, when I read these three plans, I got a new idea. Let's put it all together. Let's come up with something that works for everybody. You know, I think that's really where the Board of Super, you know, I can't speak for the Board of Supervisors. I'd like to think that's where our representatives' mindset is. I know that's where my mindset is when I'm up here. I, again, I'm not going to speak for the rest of the commission, but I feel that everybody feels the same way as me on that. But um, So I think it's great that you're down here and giving us feedback. I, I really do. Well, I do agree with you that this, this latest map appears more subjective than objective. So if you have a specific setback, a, a thousand feet or 500 feet or whatever it might be, if you have a specific setback, that's more of an objective standard as opposed to a subjective standard. I don't even know one that you on that overlay map that the, I'm sorry Mike. <coughs> on that overlay map they put out have you ever been to a well site the, the well pad itself is I think it's like four acres but they show an imprint on that over overview of what 10 11 acres so what they did when they bust these people in the last meeting was got them scared that that well is going to be right there now that's a pretty big difference so you have to take that into consideration. That imprint of that well pad is only four acres. So that's all I got. Thank you. Um, I, I guess I have an issue with the process all, also, but probably a different one. Jason, I hear you say that you want... 
Shall we start it up? Sorry. Um, Jason, I hear you say you want people's input. That, that leads me to believe that you don't think it's your responsibility to come to the hearings and watch the, vi or watch the videos of the hearings because it was three hours of residents' input. Mm -hmm. And Both so- Both were about three hours, yes. So I don't understand understand why you feel you need to get that input at this meeting. Well, so, sorry, I shut my mic open. So, at the, as, as Mike pointed out, at, at, those, at those hearings, every, you were afforded three minutes, and I don't think, Mike, you said no questions, right? And that's, that's what we saw when we watched the videos ourselves. So we get to hear people's comments, but there's, there, there's no back and forth. So this is a different form. Obviously, it's, it's not a packed room. There's less people here. Um, so, you know, uh, Mike's able to get up and, and, and speak his mind for a lot longer than three minutes. There, he's able to have some back and forth. You know, I, I think there's value in that, just like we're having now, you know, a little bit of back and forth conversation. You know, I can watch those videos and I can see people's different people's opinions, but, mm -hmm. um, but this is a different form and being able to have people come here and, and and hear what they have to say, and me being able to ask some questions and, and have a back and forth with them, as opposed to just seeing what their three minutes were to the Board of Supervisors in a hearing, it's, 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 a different, it's, it's gonna be different information for us to okay. work Okay, well, we, well do, then. we do take the time to okay. watch those and to hear the yes. input yeah. that residents and non-residents and um, provided experts are given. Okay, so then, to get more participation in these meetings from the residents to give you feedback. I think people don't know that this is an opportunity to provide that input to you. I, I would agree with you on that. I, I, so I think there's somehow, a lot of people that don't know how their local government works, that don't know, right. understand all right. the levels and all the layers that, that, that go along with right. it. Uh, so I, or even I, if this I, I, planning board exists. I mean, I, I'm relatively new to all of this also, so. Although we do post the agenda, correct? Yeah. yeah. It's on the calendar. Yeah. Uh, it's a monthly meeting. The agenda's out there. Uh, there, there are, there's an email address for people to submit comments. Um, you know, I don't know what else I can say. Actually, during the hearings themselves, when I'm streaming it live, I have the chat box open for anybody watching it to ask a question. I'll relay it. I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with uh, her brother. You know, he was asking me some back and forth. Um, it wasn't a long conversation, but I'm there. That's why I have my uh, iPhone on here. Right? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not the best, uh, but it's the best that we got there. Okay. Well, I, I will share that information as much as I can with people that they should be coming to this meeting. And I appreciate Kelly and, I'm sorry, what's your name? Linda. Linda, I appreciate how engaged you've both been. I just forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying, we can now adjourn now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just so you know, this is the map that's up. Um, uh, it was I put it up last week. I believe it was Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, just so you'll know, if you want to see where uh, you know everything is going to be. Um, no, we don't want Elizabeth Ross. Here's the main page. Uh, mega menu. All you have to do is hover over government. Come down. Proposed ordinances, 2024. Here's the oil and gas ordinances. And actually, hmm, I put the dates on here. So um, I will have June 5th, uh, 6 p.m. for the next hearing. And I have uh, Karen Drive ordinance um, to be de determined. But here's everything that we have. Here's the original uh, ordinances that were being considered. Um, potential well pad, that's the 1,000 feet, I believe, 
Um, it says right there, up in the corner, a thousand, at least a thousand feet. Um, here's 1,500 feet. I believe this is the one uh, Bruce was talking about. And then here's the latest. And that's one I was showing. Uh, so that's all on the website. And it's, it's uh, Adobe. You can uh, enlarge it. Uh, the, just use the magnifying glass. You can zoom in on it. Not all the streets uh, are on here. And that's what kind of hung us up last time a little bit. But, uh, you know, for the most part, th these are the most current maps that we have right now. And this one I, I like and I appreciate. Um, Dan, I'm not sure if you did this or somebody else, but it, it's showing setbacks from each highlighted area to Hills Henderson Elementary or um, where 79 is located. So it's showing those setbacks in between, like where 79 is right there. There's a proposed, yeah, where, where you're zooming in on. Um, it's showing 1,072 feet from um, residents. Yeah, the elementary school's up top. Mm -hmm. One of the things about this is see, see the 1,072 right there? You can see the arrow? Mm -hmm. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And there's your 1,072. So thank you for clarifying that for us. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dan. I think I, um, the other thing that I've never seen on one of these maps is the, the surface hole and the bottom hole locations. That's not been on the maps before either, so right, for the existing the wells. Reason, yeah, that, that's, that's so fascinating to be able to see. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and, that's, and, and that kind of brings up an interesting point as well because, you know, the, the idea that you can only put a well on, you know, 1% or 10% of the land doesn't mean that we can only access the gas under one percent or ten percent of the land these laterals can you know go a long way and so jason yeah that, that you would have to have uh the the rights of the the property be severed to be able to do that so so somebody if somebody owns both the surface and the subsurface rights of what of, of going horizontal like that, yeah, be okay. But you couldn't do that if you didn't have, a, a, you know, if you weren't working with somebody that had both both sets of rights. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, while you can go four miles horizontally with a well bore, all of the property owners would have to agree, or you'd have to sign up a, with a lease for um, to be able to do that underneath their property as well as on the surface of their property, if that makes sense. The, to have the uh, to have the uh, lateral go under their property, they they have, you, to, you have the lease agreement. The lease agreement has to be for both subsurface and surface minerals. If they're different, if they're different, yes. If if the drilling rig is is on the surface, but what if you're two miles away and it, you know they're going underneath your property? Or does that apply there too? Yeah, you'd have to have some sort of an agreement in place, correct? Yeah, an agreement. I mean, but it, it would be a lease that talks about um, going under your property, not on right. top of it. Yeah. Right, right. Correct. Which is how that's, which is how the process works. Right. It's, it's yeah. How, it's how it's worked right. from the beginning. There right. are two minds going at the same time. I lost track of it. This yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, and that's kind of where I, that's because I kind of had a hiccup there when you said that, Lauren. I was like, wait, but that's how this has been working from the, from the word go. Right. So, I agree. Right. Okay. Is it? Sure. <laughs> if you just give your name for the record. You hear me? I'm kind of short. My name is Debbie Augustine, and my husband is George Augustine. So the Augustine well pad is on our property. And I just wanted to say one thing that I think 
a number of us are concerned about is um, what about our rights as leaseholders and the number of leaseholders who are in the township who benefit you know, from the wells. And another thing that um, concerns us is we own large amounts of property. We have 100 acres on our farm. You know, Bruce has a lot, Mike has a lot. Like what about property owners? And you know, our farm, it's been in our name since 1870. I mean, we've lived here a long time. So we just want you to take that into consideration that that's a big deal for us, you know? So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie. Is there uh, anybody else? Anybody on the commission? Dan? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. 758. Thank you guys for letting me join virtually. Thank you for joining. It was kind Thanks of scary. You, Lauren. Good night. It was kind of scary having you up on the screen behind us like that. Yeah, it, it is. I'm like hovering with my gravelly. It felt very odd. Voice. Thank you for not sharing your cold. <laughs> Nobody wants colds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys stay healthy. Be well. Have a good weekend. Yes. Yeah, hope you, you feel better. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's...